Here I've got a nice differential equation to show everyone. So our goal is to find the general solution to the differential equation y prime plus y over x equals x times the square root of y. And this general solution will occur on the interval zero to infinity. And I'm pointing that out because this differential equation has a discontinuity built into it at x equals zero. And the existence of that discontinuity splits the real number line into two parts in which whatever solutions we find will only be valid on each of one of those parts. So in this case, we'll look at the portion which is greater than zero. Before we get started, I'd like to remark that this is an example of a Bernoulli differential equation, which is almost a first order linear differential equation. What I mean by almost a first order linear differential equation is we can do a quick transformation to turn this into a first order linear differential equation. Okay, so let's maybe get to it. The first thing that I'd like to do is multiply this entire equation by one over the square root of y. In other words, we'll divide every term by the square root of y. That gives me a new differential equation that looks like y prime over the square root of y plus the square root of y over x equals x. Notice I've done some simplification here. We know that y over the square root of y is the same thing as the square root of y occurring in the numerator. But now let's recall that when you take the derivative of a square root function, it sends the square root downstairs. But that's exactly what's happening right here. Or to be more specific, I would like to note that if we take the derivative with respect to x of the square root of y, we get 1 over 2 times the square root of y times y prime where that two in the denominator came from the power rule, given the fact that this is y to the half power. But now it looks like we've got a function here whose derivative is here. But notice this is not quite the derivative of this function, so we need to tweak it a little bit. And we'll furthermore tweak this by multiplying through by one half. So that'll put a two in the denominator here. I have a half here and I will have x over two here. Then from here, let's maybe make our substitution. Let's say that z is equal to the square root of y. And by our observation up there, we see that z prime is equal to y prime over two times the square root of y. That means our differential equation can take the following form. All of this is equal to z prime plus one over two x times z. So we've got this extra two here that we had to include equals x over two. And now we have an honest to goodness first order linear differential equation. There's a simple formula for solving this type of differential equation. Let's get that on the board. And that says the following. If we have the differential equation y prime plus a of x times y equals b of x, where a and b are nicely defined functions, then y equals one over alpha x times the quantity c, where that's a constant, plus the antiderivative of alpha of x times b of x dx, where alpha is the exponential of the antiderivative of a of x. And this turns out to be something called the integrating factor. So instead of directly using this formula, I'll use the technique that was used to develop this formula in order to find a solution for this function z. And I think that's just a little bit more transparent. Although if you wanna work it out using this formula, I urge you to do so. So let's take this function and we'll multiply it by the square root of x or x to the half power. Let's see what that leaves us with. We'll have x to the half times z prime plus one half x to the minus half times z. That's what we get from distributing this x to the half over onto this term equals x to the three halves over two. But now let's notice that this object right here is exactly the derivative with respect to x of x to the half. So we have a product rule situation here. In fact, what we have is x to the half times z quantity prime. In other words, the derivative of that. Let's just check that real quick. 
If we take the derivative of z and hold x to the half the same, we get this first term. Then if we take the derivative of x to the half and hold z constant, then we get this term. So that's good to see. So we have this equals 1 half x to the 3 halves. Now we can take the antiderivative of both sides, and doing that will allow us to solve for z pretty handily. So let's see what that'll have. We'll have the square root of x times z. So just FYI, I'll rewrite x to the half as the square root of x. Now we need to increase the exponent here by 1 and divide by the new exponent. So the new exponent will be 5 halves. Dividing by 5 halves is the same thing as multiplying by 2 fifths. So we have 1 half times 2 fifths times x to the 5 halves. And then that's going to be plus a constant c. Next, we can divide both sides by the square root of x. And we're left with z is equal to 1 fifth x squared. So notice x to the 5 halves divided by x to the 1 half is x to the 4 halves, which is x squared, plus a constant over the square root of x. But now let's recall that z was equal to the square root of y. So that means in the end, our equation y, or our equation for y, is given by 1 fifth x squared plus our constant over the square root of x, quantity squared. And that's our final answer to our differential equation. And that's a good place to stop.